Let's call the meeting to order at 6.03. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? <clears throat> is hearing none, is there any public comment at this time? Okay, hearing none, moving on, I would like to move to the meeting minutes approval, but I do not see our um, I do not see our clerk and I don't know that the, the minutes have been are, are available. Have folks reviewed the minutes? I don't believe I've seen the minutes from the previous meeting. Okay, we're gonna have to pass on our minutes approval and we can move into uh, the uh, treasurer's report. Phil, please. Okay, treasurer's report. Uh, our current cash position is $1,517,278, uh, 12, just under uh, 13,000 of discretionary funds. That has not changed. We have 1,504,385 of of grant funds for construction and pre-construction. Uh, we do have some payables that we're wait that will get approved uh, hopefully at the next uh, executive uh, committee meeting, totaling about two hundred twenty-one thousand. Um, a, a few items uh, for poll make ready services and poll inventory. Um, there's the way ready for approval, totaling about. Uh, just under 100,000. And um, the balance is made up of some uh, additional poll inventory invoices um, where we're waiting for uh, final approval and, and invoices for uh, RFP development and related field work. Um, just these are all normal, you know, normal delays and normal processing um, after we get the invoices to make sure they're properly um, reviewed and approved and signed off. Um, for grants, um, a little, little different format today. Uh, we've received about nine million seven hundred ninety-nine thousand dollars in grants to date. Of we've spent about one million five seventy-seven. Um, and then less the payables on hand leaves us of funds of it available available of um, just about eight million dollars on the nose. Um, we have uh, drawn down three million, just under three million one hundred thousand, um, leaving about six million seven hundred thousand dollars that we haven't drawn down that's out there available for us. Um, of those funds that's available for spending, about six million is um, uh, for uh, committed to uh, purchasing inventory to make sure that we're we, we're ready to to uh, to do our thing when the when the time comes because of the long time delays in getting equipment. Um, Any questions on those numbers? Uh, I see that RD has his hand up. RD, are you, do you want to comment on this? Uh, Jerry, the only thing I want to ask is, uh, Phil, is are all of these accounts in QuickBooks or is there some other app that you're using? No, I, actually there's um, all, all these funds are, uh, yes, they are, they're in QuickBooks and they're with our account, uh, Bonnie Batchelder. Uh, so she she tracks them, uh, um, uh, and I actually track them as well in Excel as a matter of habit, uh, so that I can uh, I I just have a habit of liking numbers at my fingertips. Right, my I I I'd like to suggest that in future we distribute um, QuickBooks P and L and and um, uh, balance accounts. Um, uh, printouts to um, board members before in advance of the meeting. I you would know, just we, like to to see figures. It's it's difficult for me to follow your presentation. No doubt an excellent one, but I I have difficulty processing it. 
I, I would love to see stuff on in, in print or on, on the screen in text. Understood and, and appreciated. Uh, there is, there's often a delay in getting things through QuickBooks, through the accountant and to us. But I think if we're on them, uh, we can, uh, uh, you know, get things uh, reasonably, reasonably current. So it's, it's close enough. You know, if uh, it's not on, I like to give current numbers as of today. Um, mm -hmm. Typically, if you go through the accountant, you'll have numbers through the end of last month. And, and for a meeting that meets, you know, a week or two in the month, that's, that's fairly normal. So, okay, we'll, uh, I'll pass it on. Very good, uh, RD, point taken there. Yeah, and uh, if, if you would put lower your hand now, yeah, excellent. Thank you, sir. So just Any, to continue. Yeah, yes, to please. Continue, I was, was going to ask you a, to. Yeah, we have a compilation report that's uh, uh, in draft format. We're just wait, there's some questions going back and forth um, that the that's being prepared by the accountant. Um, and just to highlight, this will probably be my last meeting uh, as treasurer. But this is my last meeting as treasurer. I guess I'll just say that because since I resigned uh, as of June 30, uh, or until they found somebody, whichever came sooner. So uh, um, I was. I, I'm looking forward to perhaps join the finance committee uh, to su support that. Uh, again, my resignation in the in the role is because of uh, my day job taking uh, more of my time and, and focus, so. Well, Phil, we can't thank you enough for all that you've done and the professionalism you've brought to this organization. There is absolutely no question about that. Yes, really. Yeah, thank you. Time. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, we do look forward to you on the uh, on the finance committee, we just decided that it meets three times a week, so that'll be perfect. <laughs> yeah, I might miss a couple of those. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for all you've done, Phil. Thank you. Uh, let's. Uh, are, are there uh, are there bills to pay on this issue? On this, did you? Do we have specific bills? Um, I I can go through them. Uh, we hadn't wanted to in the past, but I can, I'll be happy to uh, go through them with you. Uh, uh, just take me a second here. Uh, I'm going to take that up in the executive committee on Thursday, Jerry. Anything over a million dollars we're interested in. <laughs> then there's not a lot okay. to talk about then. I can, then yeah, there's, then there's no, nothing, to nothing to bring up at this time. Okay, that's fine. Because yeah, we I do. Can throw we it up on the screen if you'd like. Uh, um, So if you see it on the screen, we've got uh, uh, bills for uh, service for uh, Kentucky, that's for their service, um, an invoice for Apex, and um, several invoices pending uh, approval. I, I use the word chair, it's really so the responsible manager. So those are the invoices waiting for approval. Thank, thank you, sir. You've uh, you've satisfied my curiosity here. And and for RD, since I have this up, uh, I don't generally show my notes on the side here, but let me just hide them here. Uh, that didn't work. Guess it doesn't really matter. Um, so as far as numbers go. Here are all the grants. Um, this column is the balance in the checkbook. Um, these are the, uh, the the grant amounts, uh, funds that have not been drawn down, uh, funds received last year uh, and spent in the balance and, and in the current year. We do have some requests outstanding as well for some funds that haven't come in yet. And, uh, some of the payables that were that are pending to get us to the remaining uh, grant balances. Excellent, excellent. And, and I'll Thank have you. this attached to the minutes so that uh, you, you can look at it more closely. 
Thank you. Sh uh, shall we move on to the uh, executive director's report? Yeah. Janiel, would you like to give us an update on, first of all, what you're doing in Nashville, just in case there's anybody that doesn't know, and um, fill us yeah. in on the past week's activities or so. Well, having a yeah, good absolutely. time, I hope. Yes. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I am in Nashville for Fiber Connect 2022. Mm. There are 3,000 people here from the fiber industry. And there are a series of educational sessions about the industry. Uh, a lot of it has to do with where we are in our, in our project, and that is design, developing a network. I was here for the pre-conference conference on Sunday as well, which was very educational. There are special uh, sessions on building in rural areas, which are very relevant to us. Um, funding um, type of education and a lot of networking. Um, apparently, there were 92 vendors, exhibitors who didn't get to exhibit, so they were on the waiting list. That's how busy it is here. Um, as, as we know, there's a lot of ARPA funding and um, support for fiber build out. So, a, a, huge, a huge focus on the fiber industry now is on building out these new networks and how we can leverage all of this uh, amazing grant money. So I'm in Nashville learning a lot. And I've been here since Saturday night and will return early on Thursday morning uh, with a lot of new information and education uh, that is really a godsend. So that's what I am doing right now. Um, I want to make some of the details about... Um, the other items, somewhat brief, because we're going to go through them in the in this meeting. So, for instance, um, the webinar, the treasure, the, the, the signing with Waitfield, the materials and materials warehousing RFP, the universal service plan, the business plan, and the construction grant app are all on this agenda. So, rather than discussing it in detail right now, what I will do is fill in the gaps on some other things that aren't on the agenda. Um, and can weigh in on any of those other items when we discuss them later. So as for fences being installed starting tomorrow, we got our green light from Dig Safe, uh, from WEC, and from our local fencing contractor. Um, so that is, that is happening t t tomorrow. That will secure our fiber. Um, as for the make ready ride outs and easements, all of these are happening. Um, Phil mentioned needing some approvals on some invoices. Some of those, yes, um, I will approve. Um, others were waiting for just finals on, like, for instance, Hilton, just need some final um, authorization. And then um, we are we are starting our 1,200-plus rideouts with WEC. We had our first rideouts last week and are continuing this week with rideouts in the field um, with MBI to get poll information, which will tell us what needs to be done in the communication space, in the fiber space, and with uh, any potential poll replacements. Um, and we're starting on easements with Kotecki. So that's what's happening with the make-ready make work. Um, and then the other thing to touch on is the construction RFP which isn't on the agenda, but is a very important piece. We did put out our construction RFP at the end of last month, and we got four intents to bid, which is incredible in the current climate with a, with a shortage of construction crews available. So that we, we asked for an intent to bid as not an obligation, but to get a feeling for what we might get. So to me, that says, despite a very challenging uh, climate in the construction world, we know that four people intend to bid on our construction RFP. In addition to that, we have, um, and this is the, the final item I'll touch on um, uh, in the ED report, and that is the public engagement RFP or public engagement is a piece that I'm realizing even more at this conference is so important to get, uh, it, it's more public engagement in marketing, but to uh, put out a a public engagement RFP, which I've been working on with the communications committee, um, and also 
that uh, we will we've gotten a couple of of um, proposals from Cornerstone and Crowd Fiber that I think will help us to start getting our message out there and engaging the public in advance of the RFP that we will issue. So that's that's all I wanted to touch on, but please feel free to ask any questions if you have any. Otherwise, some of the other items I can weigh in on as they're on the agenda. Are there any uh, questions for Janiel at this time? And maybe later on as we talk, well, Janiel will be joining the conversation on other items as well, for sure. Okay. I hear I, I see no hands raised, no questions for for Janiel. Let's let's continue to move on then into our webinar update. Uh, we are working on a uh, uh, a PowerPoint, if you will, a presentation that will go with our uh, very public webinar. Um, it's scheduled for June the twenty second at seven o'clock. Uh, I believe that I will be. Uh, doing the presentation myself, uh, um, 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 unless we want to do this by committee, but I don't think so. Uh, so we're, we'll, we will uh, we we will present. You know, there's a, there's a lot to present. Of course, what we will present is is all public information. None of it would be anything we would talk about in executive session. But we we do we do have a lot of news uh, to present on moving forward. Uh, especially concerning funds and concerning our ability to utilize those funds to to bring fiber to central Vermont. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this uh, presentation and, I, and, and I'm look, looking forward to some public response too. I've been getting quite a few people asking me, you know, when am I going to get fiber? When am I going to get fiber? And, and uh, I must admit that when I tell folks that, you know, this is a big deal, we are, we're bringing fiber to all of central Vermont. This is a multi-million dollar, multi-year project. Uh, I haven't gotten any grief when I present it that way. You know, I think folks really understand that this is a, this is a pretty large undertaking and, and I'm looking forward to, to bringing that message out to a broader audience. I, uh, I hope they're receptive. Uh, do, does anybody have any questions about the webinar? And, and of course, the information will be up on our website in the next couple of days. Or right, I see a number of hands raised. So let me start with David Lawrence. Go ahead, David. Uh, well, so this is not directly about the webinar, but it's related to status of things, which is something I expect you'd cover in the webinar. But if you don't want to handle it now to handle other people that actually maybe have questions directly about the webinar, I understand that. Um, essentially, I have a question from uh, my backup delegate in Middlesex who's wondering about the poll inventory and exactly how it was done, uh, in particular with regard to um, whether the poll inventory is complete, because apparently some people had like people knocking on their doors and saying hi, and he's under the impression that some roads maybe weren't done. Uh, I can redo his message exactly. It's real brief. Um, my only question at this point is how a Middlesex resident would know if their polls have been inventoried. As an example, in looking at their planning atlas, four polls that lead up to our property on Culver Hill Road are not shown on the map. Lou Scharf mentioned that the people who did the poll inventory actually knocked on their door to provide info, but we, ne we never got that or missed such a visit. I know it's all about me, but I'm concerned maybe other Middlesex residents may have been missed. If there's anything we or other residents should do to address this. That's, that's a good point. David, can you, uh, David Healy, can you, can you address Middlesex poll inventory? Though technically every poll in Middlesex should have been interviewed, inventoried. Could there be a poll or two missing? Yes. And so getting an access to the actual data, which I can do for you and maybe for the whole, all the towns, it'd be a good next step. We've still been doing some QC, but Middlesex was done a year ago. And um, yeah, I was under the impression we were all done too. I just didn't know how to answer the possibility it, that something was missed. No, it'd be good to know if something was missing though. So okay. that's a good, good question. Great, yeah, David, uh, both Davids, uh, I, I would recommend that you send the, send the address to David Healy so he can check on the address and see where it stands in our inventory. Okay, sure. I'll, I'll forward the measure, message from my, my Middlesex cohort over to, for him Great. to handle. Thanks. Okay, excellent. Uh, Siobhan, I see your hand is up next, please. I just wanted to, I didn't know if this was good enough for the webinar to get it on the webinar, but yesterday the Orange Select Board voted $30,000 to be given to us. 
So I don't know if you want to also add that as one another town giving its support. They it's a done deal. It's but we don't have the letter yet. So yeah, we have yes, to work we, out the, those details, but they did the vote. We we definitely want to acknowledge that. Thank you, Siobhan. Which town? That's great. Again? Orange. Which town? Orange. Linda, I see your hand is up. Yes. Uh, the communications committee would like to ask all delegates and alternates to post the flyers about the webinar around your towns at community centers, at senior citizen centers, um, at uh, any place that has a bulletin board, at your library, at your town hall, all those kind of places. Uh, we are asking you to print your own copies of the flyer. If you haven't received uh, the final version, I will ask uh, John Walters to send it out again. Thank you. Linda, is the flyer available on the website? Not that I know of. Okay. I, I recognize that the purpose of the flyer is to get to folks that don't have necessarily access to the website. Understood. Just wondering if it was up there. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any any other discussion concerning the webinar update? So let. Hearing none, let me allow me to segue into the the treasurer search, and I'm I'm going to ask Janiel to uh, lead this discussion, and then I will follow up with a uh, a motion if we're ready to do that. But uh, um, we this is a very I can't describe how important this position is because it, I mean we've raised the stipend for the treasurer because very specifically because of the amount of time and and the amount of effort that it takes for someone to be treasurer for CV Fiber. I mean, not, not, not only do we have multiple sources but of funds that need to be kept track of each in its own stovepipe, those funds have specific uh, obligatory routes that they have to take that has to be mapped and and every, everything has to go back to the to the source and make sure that the that the funds add up to the amounts that we've been given and the uses have been only in the, those allowed uses and that is a rigorous process that you must pay attention to. Uh, so it's a it's quite a job for the treasurer. But but Janiel, let, let me pass it over to you and you can describe the process, please. Sure. So uh, so the board is authorized to appoint the treasurer. And uh, we uh, uh, we got notice that Phil was stepping down as treasurer. And so we put out a notice on Front Porch Forum as well as on our CV Fiber website seeking a treasurer and pointing back to the qualifications required for that treasurer. Uh, we, we did get someone who was interested originally two, but the one person um, backed out. But we, we ultimately ended with a qualified individual, Lori Beth Putnam, who has treasurer experience for nonprofits as well as for-profit organizations. And she also has experience with allocation of grant funds, which we thought is an important uh, knowledge base. She spoke with Phil um, to understand the job a bit more and got some details from him and he got some details from her. I conducted a free interview to, to talk with her and I uh, also interviewed her professional references, who she has been serving as a treasurer for. Um, then we had a panel interview conducted by myself, Ray Pelletier, Christopher Shank, and Linda Gravel um, to talk to, to Lori Beth Putnam to learn more about her and so that she could tell us uh, about her experiences and also ask us questions. So. We are now at a position where, as, as Jerry pointed out, we really do need someone as we go into this important phase of our construction plan and build allocation of the grant funds. Um, it is necessary to have somebody handling our accounts receivable and payable who understands the, the, the process and who can work with us. And we, we, um, we believe that Lori Beth Putnam will be a good candidate and work well with us. So we're excited that we have uh, Lori Beth um, interested in this role, and we would like to move to ask the board to appoint Lori Beth 
Um, in addition to that, um, pursuant to the statute, we, we'd like to state that there is no bond required as part of this appointment um, and that she will receive a stipend of $1,000 a month if so authorized. She serves as our treasurer. Thank you, Janiel. I see RD, you have your hand up, sir? Yes, just very briefly. I'm, I'm, I don't recall what we, what um, compensation we offered in an RFP um, to a treasurer, but it strikes me that we're at the point where we need some, someone with serious professional credentials on a more or less full-time basis. Um, is the stipend of $1,000 a month that we're offering sufficient? Um, and is our, um, is our RFP, is an RFP sufficient to, um, to interest uh, and, 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 and evoke an applica applications from people who are fully required on a full-time professional basis um, to be our treasurer? Or, um, and I'm, this is a question, not a statement, um, do, on account of our other contracts, our service contracts, do we not need a, a full-time treasurer office um, that, that would require us to pay more than the stipend we're offering? Um, is that something that we, that we pass off to our service provider? Um, or is this a, as it were, a corporate office that we're looking to fill? So let me, let me respond to that first and then I'll, I'll, give, I'll give Ray a chance. Um, our, our treasurer is a volunteer. There is a, st a stipend uh, for, for compensation, I suspect, for the amount of time that the treasurer has to put in, but we do have a full-time accountant. We have an accounting firm that is that is uh, overseen by the treasurer. So the 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 uh, the cutting of checks, the 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 the, the working working off the uh, QuickBooks, and the all of all of that type of work is done by our uh, accounting firm and as a as as part of our uh, authority we are required to have a treasurer as an office um, as an officer excuse me and not necessarily to have an office of the treasurer so we have farmed out the office of the treasurer if you will uh, to our uh, to, to, to our accounting firm. But I will uh, allow Ray to continue the discussion here. RD, you may recall that uh, uh, we had put in the budget uh, the $1,000 a month for the stipend for the uh, treasurer uh, because of the responsibilities laid out in the statute as well as the time that was being spent and we've estimated the time to be 20 hours plus a month. So five hours plus uh, a week. And of course the individual also attends quite a few meetings as well as uh, monitoring the, the comings and goings and processing of all the invoices and things. And has is the one, the direct link with the, uh, with the accountant. And as the chair of the finance committee, both of them um, you know, report to me in in the in the in the chain here, um, but you may recall that we had we've also adopted implementation guidelines for our financial control processes, so that we have uh, a fairly strict um, process uh, which we think will stand up uh, under under the audit audit um, and uh, inspection that's going to be coming up in this in this uh, Q1 of uh, 23. And so, and Phil, and Phil, the treasurer, and Bonnie, and a bunch of other folks participated in the development of those uh, processes. So it's a critical role. Is it a full-time role? The short answer at this point is no. I'm not aware of any any um, uh, CUD that has a full-time treasurer. Um, uh, many of them are now getting uh, accounting firms 
and many of them struggling to find an auditing firm uh, because there aren't that many that do it anymore and they're having trouble uh, scaling up themselves. So I, I think that we have the right um, infrastructure. Um, it could be that uh, the, uh, the stipend uh, may see increasing increase over a little bit of time here. Um, but um, I think we have the right uh, infrastructure in place right now. Uh, I, I would like to make a motion here um, with a few whereas setting up the motion. Whereas pursuant to 30 VSA section 3069, the board has the authority to appoint a treasurer. Whereas the current treasurer is stepping down and CV Fiber is in need of a treasurer to assist in the handling of its accounts receivable and payable as we proceed into the important phase of our construction plan and build an allocation of grant funds. Whereas CV Fiber has placed an advertisement seeking a treasurer on front porch form and on the CV Fiber website and received an interested and qualified candidate, Lori Beth Putnam, who possesses extensive treasurer experience with nonprofit and for-profit organizations, as well as with the handling of grant funds. Whereas CV Fiber's current treasurer, Phil Ciccini, and Janiel Smith conducted pre-interviews and conducted reference checks and interviews with professional references for Lori Beth Putnam. Whereas CV Fiber interviewed Lori Beth Putnam on a panel interview that included Janiel Smith, Ray Pelletier, Christopher Schenk and Linda Gravel and found her to be well qualified for appointment. I move that the governing board authorize CV Fiber to appoint Lori Beth Putnam to serve as CV Fiber's treasurer to begin in June 2022 with a monthly stipend of $1,000 as so authorized. And further that pursuant to section 3067, no bond is required as a part of this appointment. And I would uh, ask for discussion and a second, if possible. Second. <laughs> okay, I believe Siobhan got that second in. Oh, no way. No, give it to Linda. Linda got it. <laughs> is that right? I have a hard time uh, distinguishing the voices there. <laughs> okay, you, is, there, is there any discussion before we go to a vote? Uh, Christian. Just really quickly, if you want all that, or at least the very, the exact words of the motion itself, if you want me to get that exactly right, could you at least? I, I will, I will email, I will email that to you, sir. If I, if I start trying to copy and paste into the chat room, I'm, I'm sure I'll, I'll end up watching Netflix by mistake or something. Okay. Uh, is, there, uh, is there additional discussion? I would like to bring this to a vote. Uh, all in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Are there any opposed to the motion? Hearing none opposed, the motion moves unanimously. Thank you. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. And Lori Beth, we look forward to meeting you again soon before our next meeting, I hope. Okay, I'd like to... Uh, I'd like to continue, continue to move on and uh, discuss our uh, Waitsfield Telecom uh, contract that we have been we have been uh, moving forward with uh, for 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 quite a while now, and we have we have gotten to the point where we are at full agreement. We are absolutely ready to sign the document on both ends and it will be brought to, if you remember, this is now, this has been passed on to the executive committees. The, the, uh, the contract is subject to su successful negotiations with the executive committee's approval and we are going to bring this to the executive committee uh, on Thursday uh, and that will be an important action that we that we that we need to take on Thursday um, are and, and this is you know this is really a this is a, this is a quite a, quite a big deal so I uh, I'm, I'm I'm very pleased that that we that we've gotten this far um, are there any discussion on our Waitsfield telecom contract that is that is pending? 
Do we need a motion? I, I don't. I don't believe we need any action at all um, by the by the uh, governing board. My intent here was only to make sure that the governing board was aware that the uh, this will be brought before the executive committee on Thursday. And with all of the effort that we have put into this, uh, uh, I would I certainly consider these uh, negotiations successful, and and we are anticipating that the executive committee will concur. Um, but I do see a hand up, Henry. I'm just curious. The business plan that you sent out is is that reflect the current negotiations with Wagefield Telecom? Does that reflect the current negotiations with Waitsfield Telecom? Uh, yes, I believe it does because there was there had to be some there had to be a uh, uh, a, a reference, if you will, for 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 what we've uh, what we've uh, assumed in the in the business plan. So that and and what we have been doing in the business plan uh, all along is looking looking for the 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 because everything is in advance, right? We haven't been in operation yet. So we've been looking for our best estimates and many of our best estimates have been coming from responses to RFPs, contract negotiations, et cetera. So the, an the short answer, Henry, is yes. Okay, yeah, I just was wondering if once it's signed, it would need to be updated, but it sounds like it, it, it hasn't changed since since then or no the con the contract will not change to reflect the business plan it would actually be the other way around were oh, there right. any changes the other, the other yeah. way around yes yeah. well, okay. well we'll we'll talk more about the business plan later okay thanks um and and we will we will actually get to uh the this type of discussion uh if there's no more about the Waitsfield uh Contract. I would like to move on to the committee chair appointments that I believe we can we can move through pretty quickly. Are there any more questions on the Waitsfield contract? And Henry, your hand is still up, sir. Okay, excellent. So at our at our last executive committee, uh, the executive committee uh, appointed chairs and uh, uh, accepted the chairs from the uh, committees themselves. And at this point, we are bringing the appointment of the committee chairs. Uh, the executive committee recommends the appointment of committee chairs to the governing board. And we can have discussion or I can go uh, straight into that motion, which maybe would make the the discussion more uh, valuable. Seeing nodding heads, I will move right into the move right into the motion. Committee chair appointments, whereas pursuant to 30 VSA section 3071, the board has the authority to create committees and make appointments thereto. Whereas the board has created the executive committee and established established its membership as including the chairs of the CV fiber committees. Whereas the committees have selected and recommend their respective chairs from among its board membership. Whereas the executive committee has endorsed the recommendation of the committees. I move that the governing board make the following chair appointments based upon the committee and executive committee recommendations as follows. Chuck Burt as chair of the communications committee, Ray Pelletier as chair of the finance and audit committee, David Healy as chair of the planning and development committee, and Alan Gilbert as chair of the policy committee. Second. Second. That was Siobhan seconding the motion. Any discussion on these chair appointments? Let's move to a vote, please, and 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 perhaps I'll do this one the other way. Are there are 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 there any votes in opposition to this motion? Okay, hearing no votes in opposition, I will move that this motion moves unopposed. And congratulations to everyone who's now continuing in this case to be committee chair. And thank you for all the work that you do for CV Fiber, we we would be way behind where we are now without the 
extensive work of our committees and especially of the committee chairs. So I would like to thank say you. thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, that, that taken, I would like to uh, move this along to the materials purchase. Actually, the what I have in the uh, agenda here says action expected, but I, uh, in fact, the action's already been taken by the executive committee. So I believe that this is more of an update than a request uh, for action by the board. Uh, but Janelle, would you like to talk a little bit about this materials purchase or would you like me to continue? Yes, um, so uh, we are facing some long lead times on materials. We haven't actually issued the materials RFP at this point, but recognizing is that we would like to purchase the electronic cabinet to uh, be due to long lead times we are planning to put in an order for um, cabinets and cabinet electronics so that we can at least light somebody this year. Our goal is to get enough lead time on the longest lead time materials so that we can light folks as quickly as possible. So we propose putting in orders for Calix and um, Clearfield uh, electro electronics and cabinets for the purpose of lighting someone within the calendar year 2022 rather than waiting until 2023, if at all possible. Excellent, thank you, Janil. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just put a, 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 little, a little bit more uh, 20,000 foot perspective on that. So we, we have a, a bill of materials for our entire build out. And what we've what we've decided to do in instead of going forward with one large slug or even a large portion of of that uh, bill of materials, we took the longest lead and the most important materials for just for just a small area of where we're going to, the first areas where we're going to be building out, and where we are. Uh, Negotiating the purchase that was that was approved by the executive committee, uh, not to exceed two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, just for those electronics, so that as soon as we have enough fiber strung, we can get someone lit. Uh, of course, it doesn't work exactly like that. There's testing that has to be done. There's backups that have to be secured, etc. But the idea being that instead of ordering this full slug of materials. We, we, we would make this, this uh, precision order of just a few items that we know have long lead times in the hope that that will catch up with our early construction. Uh, and again, there's no action here really to be taken, uh, but the, the intention is to in, inform the, the board. Uh, is there, there any other discussion on this materials purchase? We did cover it uh, at the executive committee meeting. Okay, hearing none. This is uh, this is helpful. I I would like to move into our our RFP and potential contract for our materials, our warehouse, and our supply chain. Uh, we have been extremely active over the past. I guess it's been three weeks. It's it's hard to remember exactly when we we got our RFPs back. We we have been working with. MBI, we asked them to, to manage the RFP process, which includes collecting and collating the questions, helping us respond to questions, and then collecting and, and organizing the responses so that we can, we can compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges across multiple bidders who, of course, don't always follow the same pattern that you ask them uh, to follow. These things happen. And MBI uh, has a lot of experience in this area, and they have been extremely helpful um, in, in helping us formulate our, our evaluation of the RFP. And I will add that we, we reached out to MBI because NRTC um, had planned on responding to our, to our RFP. So we took NRTC and took them totally out of the RFP evaluation a submission and evaluation process um, so that there wouldn't be any any conflict there. Uh, Ray, would you like to continue this discussion? And I'll take a sip of water. 
Sure, I could, and and I think that it might be helpful to start with the um, start with the motion, and um, it'll it'll provide some context uh, for the discussion. And I'm putting the motion in the in the uh, chat room, but I'll I'll read it. Whereas CD Fiber through its contract with Mission Broadband Inc. issued a request for proposals for materials warehouse supply chain services on 3 May 2022. Whereas CB Fiber received four proposals, two of which include proposals for all three components of the RFP, while there is one proposal for material only, and the fourth was for material was for warehouse supply chain services, which pro proposal and discussions reflected that the two of them were participating jointly and essentially as one team in response to the RFP. So basically, we wind up with two, uh, three teams uh, responding. Whereas MBI and the CV Fiber RFP review team, consisting of the board chair, the planning and development committee chair and vice chair, the finance committee chair and the executive director reviewed each proposal, submitted questions to the respondents, checked references and conducted interviews with each team. Whereas acquiring warehouse and supply chain services will require contract negotiations. Whereas CV Fiber reflected in the RFP a willingness to participate with other CUDs in the provision of warehouse services, and at least one CUD has expressed an interest therein. Whereas the acquisition of materials will require the submission of purchase orders to one or more vendors offering the best value to CV Fiber in terms of pricing and delivery lead times. Whereas the executive committee recommends the following actions. Move that the governing board take the following two actions. One, the board approved the award of a warehouse and supply chain services contract to KGP Company, KGP Co., subject to successful negotiations with the contractor, and if applicable, an agreement with one or more CUDs, each is determined by the executive committee. And secondly, the board approved the expenditure of up to $10 million subject to available funding and CV Fibers procurement policy for the establishment, operation and security of a warehouse and storage yard and the acquisition of such materials from such vendors as the executive committee shall to be determined, shall determine to be in the best interest of CV Fiber. Second. Who was who that second? Was that Christopher? David. David, thank you, David. We have a second. Is there is there discussion? And I, I will remind folks that we are not in executive session. If the discussion takes us there, we can certainly go to executive session. Um, but are there are there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, I would like to uh, propose that we vote. And this time, I'm, I'll I'll look for the affirmative around the board. All in favor of the motion as seconded, aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Hearing none opposed. Thank you all. This is this is a, a, an extremely important step for CV Fiber. Excellent. Uh, Thank you. What? One extra. I'm sorry. One extra. Is there a Dave, hand? I just want to point out, Fred Barry, and the board, the sensitivity of the timing. These quotes that we got are very sensitive to timing. So this is a great movement for that to help us execute so we can meet the prices they gave us in the RFP because it's changing every month. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. With that, with that done, that business done, let's move on to our universal service plan that that uh, all of the board members, I hope, have had the opportunity um, to see. Um, Mike, uh, Mike from Barrytown, let me ask you directly, sir. Did did you did you receive a copy? Are you on our email? Yes, I, I, I yes, I did. I did receive okay. it. Excellent. Thank you. I just I just wanted to check on that. Okay. So this this universal service plan is something it is a it's something that is a requirement for our construction grant application we have to submit a universal service plan uh, as a as a necessary component of this construction grant application which is what brings it to uh, 
the point of being ripe for this meeting because we are moving to bring our construction grant application to the uh, VCBB. So we need this universal service plan and the same thing goes for the business plan, but we'll do we'll do one at a time here. I, I'd like to, uh, to pass this universal service plan off to David so that he can discuss what it's based on. And again, I will note that we are not in executive session, but we can move to executive session uh, should we need to. Okay. So the uh, requirements of the Vermont Community Broadband Board was that every CUD, if they were gonna seek construction grant funds, um, develop and adopt a universal service plan. What does that mean? It means we are guaranteeing when we use their money, we will reach all the eligible locations within our district with that money. And so it lays out pretty much where they are, how many we're gonna serve, our relationships with other folks, and, um, and make the commitment to the board that we're going to do what they asked. Um, the, uh, the document is a little duplicative of some of the other stuff in the RFP, I mean, in the grant application, but basically it's, it's our commitment, showing them where we're going, how much we're doing, and when we're gonna do it. And, um, and if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer them without divulging too many details in public. I'm not seeing additional questions for David. I, I would like to bring a motion to the floor and then perhaps we can we can continue some some discussion. And this is concerning the universal service plan. Whereas CV Fiber intends to submit a construction grant application to the Vermont Community Broadband Board on or about June 16th, 2022. Whereas a requirement of the construction grant application is the inclusion of a CUD adopted universal service plan. And whereas the governing board adopted a mission and vision on May 8th, 2018, and whereas that mission and vision, mission and vision stated, the mission being we will provide central Vermont residents, businesses, and civic institutions with universal access to a re reliable, secure, locally owned and governed communications network able to grow to meet future community needs. The vision being we envision a high-speed digital highway where traffic flows freely, growing the regional economy and broadening digital opportunities for people of all ages, means and interests, thereby enriching the public and private lives of our residents. Whereas the Planning and Development Committee and the executive committee recommend adoption of a universal service plan. I move that the governing board adopt a universal service plan subject to such refinement as the executive committee may deem appropriate prior to its submission to the Vermont Community Broadband Board. Second. That is a second by Linda, if I have this one correct. Thank you. Uh, is there any discussion following up on our universal service plan? Hearing none, I believe we are ready for a vote. Again, I, I, I'd like to hear and see the, uh, the positive, positives on this. Uh, all in favor of the motion as, as seconded, aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none opposed, the motion moves unanimously. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you, David, for all the effort that went into this. A substantial piece of work. Um, so moving moving next to the to the business plan, yet again another substantial piece of work. We we have contracted with NRTC to develop our business plan, and let me rephrase that. We 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 started out, of course, with Interisl doing our initial business plan, and what we what we did with NRTC as as we have learned more about what it takes to provide fiber. And as we've learned more about the district and the needs of the district, and we've learned more about the engineering required to provide fiber and the operations required, we've, we've contracted with NRTC to provide both a business plan and a financial model, an actual spreadsheet model that supports that business plan. And we have both of those in hand. 
Uh, again, the business plan is a necessary component of our construction grant application. So again, the timing is ripe for the uh, governing board to uh, accept this business plan as being a part of our construction grant application. I, I, I really want to point out here, even more than the universal service plan, this business plan has to be a snapshot. We, 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 we know what we've seen in the past. We try to understand what we see today, and we're trying to forecast the future. And the business plan has to take all three of those into, the, into account. We forecast out for 20 years of operations as a part of our business plan. As we learn things, things change. And, and some of the things we learn are helpful. Some of the things we learn are new hurdles we have to jump through. But, but it, the business plan is a living document that will change. We have presented what we call version four of the business plan that we um, will, will provide if, if, if accepted here by the governing board, we will provide as a part of our construction grant application that will be revised at some point in time, as I said, it is, it is a, living, a living document. Um, Ray, would you like to discuss a little bit more about our business plan or, or David, would you like to have some additional input? I'll let Ray go first. So I uh, prepared a motion that might provide some additional context. So if I could perhaps present that, if that's okay, I see John Morris has his hand up. Oh, thank you, Ray. Go ahead, John, please. I didn't mean to jump ahead of who was already speaking. Uh, I just have a couple of questions that are kind of specific in the business plan. Um, is now the appropriate time to do that or uh, should we do that after Ray has presented what he has to present? Um, well, let me ask you a question. Are, are you going to send us into executive session to give you an answer? I I believe that we could avoid executive session with my for my answer, but my answer my question is a little bit specific. Okay, how about if we let Ray do the motion and then and then we'll we'll make this part of the discussion with Ray's motion on the table. That's fine. I'll take my hand down. Excellent. Thank you. We'll go right back to you after the motion. All right. I posted the motion in the chat room. Uh, whereas CV Fiber intends to submit a construction grant application to the Vermont Community Broadband Board on or about June 16, 2022, and whereas a requirement of the construction grant application is the inclusion of a CUD adopted business plan, and whereas NRTC has been engaged in the development of a business plan informed by the input from the Governing Board Chair, the Planning and Development Chair, Finance Chair, and the Executive Director, and whereas this is a living document that will undergo change to adjust for changing conditions. This version four is a snapshot in May 2022 of the architecture, project scope, estimated capital and operating expenses, preliminary construction sequence and schedule, estimated revenues and potential risks. And whereas funding, materials and labor availability have already informed this version of the business plan, these factors will continue to cause adjustment in these plans. And whereas notwithstanding the impact of these variables, CV Fiber will continue to be motivated by the need to serve the underserved, to sustain the business, to meet engineering requirements, and to ensure the maintainability and reliability of the CV Fiber community network. Whereas the executive committee recommends the adoption of the business plan version four, subject to its refinement. It is moved that the governing board adopt the business plan version four, subject to such refinement as the executive committee may deem appropriate prior to its submission to the Vermont Community Broadband Board. Second. Seconded by Siobhan, thank you. Now, John, please uh, bring us your, your discussion. Uh, okay, so my first question is pretty general. Does including this in the grant make it conf uh, make it no longer confidential? Is it is it then public information? No, sir. This 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 remains confidential. And and allow me to explain. When 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 we submit the grant, we are we are asked to identify those portions of the grant that we consider confidential, so that the the uh, community broadband board when they receive our information, they know what it is that we, we feel uh, is confidential information. Uh, does, does that answer your question, sir? Yes. Okay, and you have a so follow-up. My second right? question, yes, my second question is on page 10. 
There is a table there that talks about uh, months and years. And I noticed that for 2022, the first, the month in the second column is much earlier than the month in the last column. But in all of the other, for all of the other years of that table, it's the next month. And I'm curious about how that can happen. So uh, I appreciate looking at the. I appreciate somebody, the way you formulated that question. Thank you. <laughs> David, so can you I, respond to this? I just don't this? know, is, is that a mistake or am I misreading it? I, my guess it's a mistake. I don't have the document open, but my my sense is uh, you are such a great proofreader that that error can be fixed. I mean, did it look like it's easily fixed, John? I would imagine that the month in the in the final column needs to be the end of the year, not not the, the fourth month of the year. OK, yeah, I'll, we'll go back and re revise that table. Page, what was it? Ten. And thank you. Thank, thank you, John. Much I'm sorry, appreciated. I didn't get to read it until just now, so I couldn't uh, yeah, give you no, uh, feedback by email. Un un understood. We are uh, nearly all volunteers here. Phil, I, I see your hand is up. Please. Yes, thank you. Uh, first. Um, it's great to see this. What a, what a great document. What, what a lot of work. Uh, we're constantly becoming more real. I love it. <laughs> um, mine's really a formatting question. Uh, it's I, I, traditionally when I look at it, think of a business plan uh, being the accountant. I think of seeing a P and L, a full P and L. Certainly, all the pieces are there. Uh, but I think you'll find uh, if this is handed to a banker as part of a developing relationship with a bank, or with a bank uh, they'll be wanting to see a P&L balance sheet cash flow uh, attached to it. Clearly, those documents are behind this someplace, uh, but it's just a formatting thing. Yeah, you're, you're right, Phil. Those, those, those documents do exist in the, in the uh, multi-tab multi spreadsheet uh, and dashboard that actually goes along with that with that with that spreadsheet. Yeah, you don't want to print it out. That that's not going to work. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. I, I've worked with NRTC in a prior life. I I've seen some of their models. Yeah. Thank thank you though for for pointing it out. Do you, do you have another another comment, Phil? That's it. Again, thank you. A lot of hard work. Appreciate it. Thank you, Tom Fisher. I see your hand, Hi. sir. Yes, yeah, I'm a little late. I was going to reply to the comment about that table, uh, that camping question. And it, it may just be a, um, a review of, of the way it is worded in the headings of that table to kind of explain what is meant. Um, my understanding based on you know, information on, on, on how build is going to occur, what the process is like, made sense to me in reading that table. So that just may be a difference in the way it's written. But I'm sure David can cover that well when you read it. Yeah. Since we didn't, you know, NRTC wrote this, and I'm uh, in, in, in fixing this table, I'm looking at it right now. It looks like it can be fixed based on the other information that's in there. Um, just an odd one, the uh, 2024 one. Um, and build end and customers starting way before the build end. Um, not so good. Okay. Well, the, actually, actually, the, there will be installations that are occurring during build. And, and so none, none of those dates are in in um, out of out of range of being reasonable. So um, I I looked at the dates; they look fine. And so what what happens, John, is that there'll be some building, and as they get so far ahead, they'll start doing installations. And so what you see is you'll see that the building starts in a certain month, and then one month later, it shows the installation starting. Yeah, uh, that's within the realm of uh, reasonableness. Is it going to happen that way? No, no. <laughs> but it, it could. <laughs> Is there additional uh, discussion? And and uh, David, you can you you can you can still double check that entry, right? Oh yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, what, Ray, what Ray just said is correct. It's a question yeah. whether you believe you can light 
people up one month after construction and that year started. And it's probably true, you could. I bet, so that's the working assumption. Yeah. Um, any, any, any other discussion here for our, for our, for our business plan? We have a motion on the floor. Oh no, RD, please go ahead, RD. Uh, just very briefly, David, if, um, um, if, if, if we adopt this plan tonight, can such changes as John was sort of peripherally suggesting in his comment, can such changes be made? Um, Absolutely. I the, the, Absolutely. Yeah, I think the way the motion is worded that it, it, this is version four, it's constantly going to be updated. And so we'll be seeing this changes as we go forward is information changes, um, cost change. Um, as you'll notice, there's certain assumptions made in it. Maybe some of those assumptions will change. Um, and so it'll have to be updated just to deal with those. Certainly some of those assumptions will change. And and that's right. why many and of those assumptions are are a changeable cell in the spreadsheet that ripples through the spreadsheet. So right. you don't have to go and change every calculation, right? Because things things like take rates and 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 uh, assumed lead times and these things, you know, are, are all changeable in the in the document. RD, do you have additional discussion here, sir? No, no, I think I'm okay. Thanks. Okay, very good. Uh, I believe we might be ready for a vote here, or is there additional discussion on this motion? All right. All, all, all in favor of the motion on the table? Aye. 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 Any, Aye. Any, 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 aye. any opposed? Hearing none opposed, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you, everyone, for that. Uh, so these, you know, the, these past few uh, headings, uh, and 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 I mean these past few headings. How about this? How about the the past three years that we've been in existence have been leading up to this construction grant application? Um, going back to when we didn't even know there was going to be such a thing as a construction grant, <laughs> but 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 now we find ourselves, and I would say that that uh, in the past 18 months anyway, pretty much all of the work that we've been doing either directly or indirectly has been in support of being able to submit a construction grant application. And we are there. Um, I don't know, I, I do have action expected on the on the agenda, but I actually I don't I don't think there really is an action to be taken uh, by the governing board, I, I had to send out this. I had to send out this agenda before we had our executive committee meeting. So, without knowing what the outcome of the executive committee meeting might be, I uh, I, I included this as a as a as an action expected. Um, I think I I, I, I would like to ask uh, David to talk a little bit about our application, and and this this is for the. Uh, for the situational awareness of of everybody on the yeah. on the governing board to understand just quite exactly what this is and 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 what's included in it, David, if you would please. Sure. Sure. So the uh, the Vermont Community Broadband Board put out a request for proposals in January. It was two process. So two well, first we had to be eligible, and we had to tell them how we wanted to submit our application. So. We passed the first test. They accepted our eligibility application, I don't know, about six weeks ago. And the next part was the detailed application. And the, and the, the method we're going is a phase construction. So what we're submitting is a phase one construction construction plan. And the document, all the elements they want is like six separate parts. We need to certify things. We need to have a transmittal letter and all the general stuff. They want to know who we're working with. They want a business plan. They want a universal service plan. Um, they want us to describe funding for the project. And then they want the details of the project description. 
And in that, um, we are very fortunate because NRTC has given us an executable project plan that has all the details the board is looking for. And today we received from NRTC another attachment. They sent us the high level design documentation, which is one of the elements that the state is state's contractor is going to rule review to make sure that the technology and methods we're using are up to the state standard that they want done. Um, they have a timeline required not to exceed estimated price. Um, that that's interesting. We are only allowed, and I'll give you the number. We're only allowed to apply for eighteen million two hundred eighty-nine thousand um, dollars. We have already received six million. So, uh, grant up. Uh, we received six million for the for materials. So we'll be submitting uh, the grant application will be for twelve million uh, two eighty-nine. Um, and so we had to detail the breakout how, what the money is going to be spent on. Um, and then there's a whole series of questions on network performance and monitoring. And then a whole series of questions on collaboration, coordination, resiliency, redundancy, incidental overbuild, uh, sustainability, affordability, technical and security approach, network performance and monitoring. And I think I left out an element in there that's um, that I want to highlight. They asked us to provide an equity subscription description for the whole project in which we did Siobhan did a fabulous job in writing that one up. And uh, then there's like, uh, let's see, I got eight letters H through uh, A through H attachments. So the universal service plan, the compliance, the um, compliant business plan and the executable project plan, letters of support, community commitment of opera funds, operating agreements and other partner agreements, network maps by distribution area, and a confidential request. So one of the uh, one of the attachments is a memo from Jerry outlining all the pieces of this grant application that are confidential. So it's a pretty very comprehensive grant application and you would expect that considering the amount of money they're about to give out. So I'd be happy to answer any question on the um, the process and, and the elements that go into it. This couldn't have been done without all the different documents that we have had NRTZ prepare or Waitsville Champlain Telecom. It's all one big package and it's going to be probably three or four hundred pages when we finish. Um, so compiling it into Two PD. I'm going to think of it two PDFs, but it's going to be quite large. Is there any discussion or questions for David? Well, David, I'd like to thank you for the effort you're making in pulling all this together. Well, it's not, uh, just, not just me. <laughs> it is. It is not just you, but you, you're you're. You you are the force behind pulling this together. It's uh, it's definitely been a collaborative effort, and thank you to everybody. Um, well, if there's if there's no more discussion here, um, I'm wondering if there isn't a motion to adjourn unless there is additional discussion to be had. Well, R D, I see R D's hand is up. Yes. Uh, when will we receive an M O U? When will towns receive an M O U? for their select boards to sign with respect to our ARPA donations. Uh, th this <clears throat> month. Good, thank you. Hands down. Hands thank down. You, Additional questions from anyone, comments? Uh, I'm gonna make a motion to adjourn. Second. Seconded by Siobhan. To Neil, I think that might be you. I don't know who's making that noise. Or maybe it's RD again with his static <laughs> machine. <laughs> Not me. Good night, all. Good Thank, night, you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.